Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is a motion quick tip. This is my first tutorial on using one of the most overlooked parts of the motion interface, the library. You can get to the library by clicking on this middle tab of the utility window where you can also use the shortcut Command 2. Here you'll see a browser of sorts to help you navigate through the many different types of content available. On the left side are the categories. Click on one and you'll see the category broken down into folders on the right. Click on a folder and all the content from that folder will show up in the window below. Now it takes a really long time to go through everything in the library and that's fine because you can always find new things. But the purpose of these tutorials will be to explore the elements that are underused and hopefully show interesting ways to incorporate them into your projects. I'm going to start with the generators category. Generators are elements that create patterns, shapes, or gradients that you can modify. Some of them, like membrane here, are animated and that animation can be changed and composited to create, say, abstract backgrounds or something like that. Others, like soft gradient, are simply pre-made objects that can be derived from other means but are simpler and easier to use. They also seem to require less processing power to produce so in complex projects it's a way of freeing up more real-time speed. Finally, there are some generators that create unique elements that can't be made any other way. Included in this list are clouds and lens flares. What I like to do though is to get into some of the lesser known generators. Select the grid generator and drag it into your project. Now I'm using a 1280 by 720 project but you can use whatever you want. The grid generator creates a very fine pattern of white lines and black squares. Click on the inspector tab and then go to the generators tab to view the parameters that you can modify. The width, height, and pixel aspect ratio are going to default to the same as your project. The offset will shift the grid on the X or Y axis and then there are color pickers for the line color and what is called background color which refers to the squares. Select the background width and crank it up to about 60 and do the same to the height. Make sure that the numbers match in order to keep them as a square. Then grab the line width and make it 45. This will give you thick white lines with large black squares. Now you can color these lines, make them semi-transparent, or even add graph paper lines if you want to create a sort of graph-like grid. But I want to show you how I like to use this generator, which is as a texture. Label the group Textures. Then create a new group above it by clicking the plus sign here in the Layers pane. Label this group Background. Hit Command 2 on your keyboard to go back to the library. We're going to need something interesting for our background. Scroll down to the content folder. This is by far the largest category in the motion library. There are over 1400 items in this category alone. Select the backgrounds folder. Okay, so many of the objects in this folder are graphic animations themselves, which isn't really what I'm looking for. I'm kind of looking for a still image. Select the images folder then and you'll see that this folder is broken up into several other folders. In the folio folder, there are lots of great looking high res images that we could use. We've got ash wood, we got bamboo, and here's concrete. A lot of great stuff in here, but I'm looking for something very specific, and I could spend hours looking around the content folder for it, or I could just do a search. Select the All folder. Right above it is a handy search bar that will search any one category for whatever you type in. Type the word Metal. Select the one that says Just Metal and drag it into our background group. If it doesn't fit perfectly, it's probably because Motion is automatically scaling it down to fit in your project. Go to the Inspector and choose the Properties tab and then scale it up until it fits your frame. Go back to the library. You can also use the library to add filters and behaviors to existing layers. Select the Filters category and then click on the Stylize folder. Find the indent filter and drag it on to the background group. The indent filter uses a layer's luminance or else its color channel to create a sense of depth 
As you can see, it kind of makes this metal image look pitted and bumpy. Go to the inspector. In the filters tab, you will see the parameters for the indent filter. About halfway down is a source well called the height map. This allows us to use another image or another layer as the basis for the effect. In the layers pane, drag the textures group into the well. Instantly, the metal is indented with the look of the grid that we just created, like it's uh, stamped with the pattern. If the squares on the metal aren't square as they are in the grid layer, it's because the indent filter is stretching the grid to fit the aspect ratio of the metal layer. Uncheck the stretch to fit button, then change the height map scale to 2 for both the X and the Y. That should fix the problem. Now this looks cool, but let's try a different generator. Turn off the grid layer in the layers pane. Go back to the library and in the generators category find the concentric shapes generator and add it to the textures group. The reason I dragged the entire textures group into the source well for that indent filter instead of just the grid layer was so that I could audition a couple of different generators and see which one I liked better in the effect. See, I can just turn one layer off and turn the other one on to compare and I don't have to keep dragging each layer back into that source well. Adding the concentric circles layer gives the metal a really cool look. If I want to just see the generator, I can turn off the background layer. Make sure that the circles are selected and go to the generators tab of the inspector. Increase the width to about, I don't know, 85. Then lower the contrast to about 35 or so. As you can see, this creates slightly dizzyingly hypnotic rings. They're actually a little hard to look at. However, adding gray areas in addition to the white and black areas change how the indent filter looks. Turn the background group back on to view the effect. Okay, not bad. Go back to the contrast parameter and take it down a little more. Just until the edges of the rings are sharp. Nice. Now select the indent filter and in the filters tab we can adjust the effect even more. Increase the depth so that the shadowy areas are a little bit more defined. You could also adjust the shadows by changing the light rotation, but I kind of like where it is now. I'm going to bring up the highlight brightness to give it a little bit more definition to those edges. Okay, I think that'll do it. Let's add another layer to this, maybe some text. One reason that I applied the indent filter to the group instead of the metal layer itself was so that I could add more layers in and they would all be affected by the same filter. For example, look what happens when I just grab the rectangle shape tool and draw a rectangle. It becomes affected by the indent filter and actually looks a little bit like tape or a sticker or something like that. I'm just going to delete this though because that's not really what I was going for. But I could maybe go for some text. Now I could use the regular text tool, but since we're talking about generators today, why don't I use a special text generator? Go back to the library, find the numbers generator, and drag it into the background group. In the generator tab of the inspector, you'll have three familiar sections that deal with any text layer, format, style, and layout. In addition, you'll have the generator section which deals with the numbers and the counting. You see the numbers generator is basically a counter that counts up or down in a few different formats. Now I'm not really going to get into it too much, but if you haven't used it before, you should really check it out. Change the minimum digits to 4. Then change the start number to some 4 digit number, anyone will do, and change the end number to another 4 digit number. The difference between the two numbers and the length of the layer itself are going to determine how fast the generator counts. Finally, turn off the thousandth separator and then click on the format button to adjust the size of your text. As I make the numbers a bit bigger, notice how it conforms to the ridges of the metal just like the rectangle did. Then click on the style button to set the color. Even though the text color is pure white, it looks gray in the canvas 
because of how the indent filter uses brightness and darkness to kind of create the illusion of depth. Change the color of the text to black. Now go to the Properties tab and change the blend mode from Normal to Overlay. This blends the text into the metal a little bit better. Another thing we can do is have the text bend in a circle. Go up to the Shape Tool button. Click and hold it down until you see the Circle Shape Tool and then select it. Hold down the Shift key and draw a medium circle about like this. In the inspector, uncheck the Fill button in the Shape tab and instead check the outline. Then click on the Properties tab and hit the Reset Transformation button, that's this little curved arrow here, to reset its position to the center of the canvas. Reselect your Numbers layer and in the Generator tab, click on the Layout button. Change the Layout method to Path and then go down to the Path shape and change that to Geometry. This creates a source well that will allow you to use a custom shape as the path that the text aligns to. Drag your circle into the well. Now I can select the circle and scale it up in the Properties tab to adjust where the text is going to go. To position the text around the circle, go back to the layout section of your text generator and adjust the path offset until the numbers are facing how you want them. Then turn off the circle layer. It doesn't need to be on. If you play the project at this point and the numbers are jumping around, you can fix that by going into the format section and checking this button, the monospace button. Doing this will likely require that you have to adjust the tracking and the path offset again to compensate, but at least the numbers won't jump around. Okay, one last thing to try. Turn off the background group so that you can see your textures group. Turn the grid layer back on and drag it above the circles layer so that it's on top. I want to double up a bit on the texture of our metal. I can only do that though if both textures are visible in the group. Twirl open the line color parameter in the generators tab. Drag the opacity down to zero. This will make the lines disappear and reveal the circles below. Turn the background group back on to see the effect. Now you can tell we have both generators contributing to this indent filter. But it is a little bit busy. I just want to create a bit of worn pitted look. Go back to the grid layer. Click on the background color and change it to a dark green. Drop the background opacity to about 15 and then crank the feather way up. You may want to adjust the line width as well to manipulate it further. Turn the grid layer on and off to see the difference. It should be subtle, but a nice detail. Okay, there you have it. Just a couple of ways that you can use generators that come bundled with Motion. I'll be back soon with another tutorial on using the Motion library. In the meantime, check out some of my other Motion tutorials right here on the cow. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a Motion Quick Tip.